Hello here, right? it's Mr. Cleary here. I want to show you a few videos that uh, detail a few of the 3D prints that I've been having a crack at. Um, so the first one I've got here is from Scott. Let me just get that video to come to life. Now Scott, I'll just mute my audio there so I don't go deaf with my headphones on. Scott's made himself a little uh, 3D pingu. So this is him on the print bed. Um, so this is his model here. This part here, my kids were saying that, oh, it looks like Pingu's got a beard. That's actually a support material, so that actually gets broken off the model once it's printed. Um, so that is his on the bed just after it finished printing. It came up an absolute treat. I'll show you what it looks like in Cura, which is the software that I use to render these files before we send them over to the 3D printer. So this is the file that Scott sent through. He's gone to a fair bit of effort here. His use of circles is uh, fantastic. It's almost perfect in every way. So these circles on the front here, they're not perfectly lined up, but um, it didn't affect the print really. It kind of just gave him a little bit more character. You can see here though that there's no piece underneath here like there is in that video. Where'd my video go? My little pingu. So that's all support material. And that once you've finished, you snap all of that off. So I'll show you another video and we'll um, I'll try and get a gazer at how that looked once it was finished. So that there is a little ring that the printer always prints before it starts printing your model, just to make sure that it's feeding the print material through nice and clean. My home office is covered in that stuff at the moment and support material as well. Um, so you can use a very, very sharp knife to cut that off, a Dremel tool. It's not designed to be stuck super hard. It's just designed to provide a platform where things can be built because it can't print in midair. It has to print on something. It has to follow the rules of gravity. So um, I had a little crack at this with the knife first. And because it was a long straight piece, it, it didn't really want to come off as easily as I was hoping. And of course, I didn't want to snap the nose off Pingu. It had been printing for about an hour and a half. And the last thing I wanted to do was uh, snap, snap Scoot's uh, Newt Newt nose off. Um, but I did get to have a crack at it with a set of pliers and that um, that did the trick. I think I've got some video of uh, Pingu looking finished and looking good too. So I'll show you that one in a second. So another one I got from Ethan was this one. Now it depends on the angle you look from. From there it kind of looks like a gravestone. Not that exciting but from the side you can probably spot that it's a, uh, a little Minecraft character. So Golden Steve Statue is the name of the file that was sent through. Now that there at full size is about a six hour print. So I scaled it down quite a bit to print it. And I've got a video um, of that little fella being printed. So I'll open that one up. So you can see here, this guy's got print material, sorry, support material on him as well. So everywhere there's an overhang, the printer will create this ledge, this little um, sort of support so that the bits you want to, to hang over have something to sit on. So all of that stuff, the idea is that it should break off pretty easily. I'll just um, see if I've got a video where I have broken that stuff off. So you can see here the guy's looking pretty clean there. That's his stand. Now I, in the process of removing the support material, accidentally snapped him off. Um, but because that's a nice flat edge going onto a nice flat edge, a couple of dots of super glue and, and that'll be fine. So um, not too catastrophic. You can see it looks pretty good. I have asked Ethan to see if he can redo that for me. I want him to, and if you are watching Ethan, this is what I want you to do. I want you to add maybe a rectangle here, just a really low lying rectangle, either sunk in or pushed out, and here and here as well. So where his head and hair are, these are really well defined because they overhang. And that gives the, the model good definition. But just to beat that crucifix factor, if you know what I'm trying to say, um, if you can put some, some lines between his legs, so some lines here and some lines 
uh, on his arms, that'll be really good too. The other thing you might do is maybe make his arms just a tiny bit fatter than his body, and you might make his legs a little bit less fat than his body or something like that, just to give it that same definition that his head, his neck, and his hair has, you'll end up with a much better piece. And um, if I print it again, I'll try not to destroy it. So this here, this is the print material uh, that I've snapped off that model. So that's what it looks like. It's just, it prints really light, like not to the quality that it prints the main model. It prints this little really light material just so that your, your real model has something to balance on. And um, I've been printing for students most of today. I've printed something for Scott, his Pingu, printed Ethan's Golden Steve, and I've printed a TARDIS for Molly Frederick, so I've got support material all over my house at the moment. So this is another look at Scott's Pingu. As you can see, it's come up pretty clean. I think it's actually put a bit of support material in the middle of this circle as well. Now, I'm not going to try and dig that out, uh, but you can see the support material has come off pretty cleanly, uh, and it looks a treat. I've got him sitting on my desk at the moment, um, and he's got a nice flat bottom. He'll be a welcome addition, I'm sure. Uh, I'll be able to give you that once we get back to school, Scott. And I'll probably print a couple more out just so I can keep them as display uh, at the school. So that there, that little funny um, piece there, that snap piece, that's all that support material that I showed you earlier. So it sort of snaps off, usually. And the idea is that you snap that off without, you know, snapping his nose off. So I got uh, the the bond there was strong enough that um, that it held up okay. Now every now and again you will snap one off. So your options are to either print again or um, super glue works pretty well or hot glue as well. You can always stick those things back together. But um, best to make a print that is. Um, sort of strong where it needs to be strong, if that makes sense. So here we have the printer in action. This is um, Molly Fredericks's TARDIS. Now it doesn't look like a TARDIS from the front there because it is printing support material. So the top part of the TARDIS, which is like this phone booth looking thing, it has overhang. So it printed support material all the way around the edge. Um, and you can see there, that's the orange filament feeding through down to the print head and just layer by layer by layer that'll go around and around and around until the unit is printed. So this is the TARDIS sitting on the print bed. You can see the top here that looks exactly how it's meant to look but the sides here, all of these sides are covered in print material because this edge here is actually overhang. So there was quite a bit of support material that I had to uh, snap off that one so that the details of her model from underneath are, are easily visible. So you can see the sides look rough, that's because it's just support material. So there's no emphasis on quality, it's just about making a platform for the stuff above it to be uh, able to be printed on. Now I'll give you a quick look at Molly's in Cura. So this is what she sent through to me. I think I left it at its original size. So you can see the sides have got um, some pretty good detail here on the windows on this phone booth thing. But the video we just watched would have shown uh, none of that detail. I'll just go back to that last video real quick. So you can see here looking at the sides, none of that detail is there because that's still covered in support material. And I've got a video here of where the support material has been removed might actually have a video of me trying to scrape a bit of that off. So sometimes you have to do it with a really sharp knife. Sometimes you need to use a pair of pliers. Um, but more often than not, it's printed so lightly and in such a fragile way that you can just um, give it a bit of a wiggle and, and usually get those pieces off. So you can see these little side bits. And um, you can see a little bit of the detail of the TARDIS underneath my big fingers if I move them. So there, that's just rubbish support material which can easily be removed. I have to forgive the poor video quality there. So that's me scraping and scraping and scraping. And there you can see the, the detail of, um, of Molly's design has actually come through really well. So having a crack with the pliers there just to get the, the more sticky bits of that support material off. 
Let's see if I can get to. So there's still a few bits at the bottom there, which you know, if I want to make it perfect, I'll have to hit it with a file, a Dremel, or even a nail file can sometimes take off a few of those those rough edges that you can't quite get to. But if you you'll notice the lid of the TARDIS is, is the most detailed part. So because it all goes in and there's no overhang or anything like that, the printer's not challenged. So that's where you'll always get your, your highest resolution and your best detail. So you can see, see there those details coming into focus. A nice little model and mostly squares, not fully squares, but a lot of squares makes things a little bit easier to work with. And all of that is uh, support material that I've had to remove from the sides. So all of that the printer produces just so when it gets to here, it's got something to print on. Because again, printing in midair is not something that, uh, that this printer is capable of. Now, what else have I got here? So here are all the models that I printed today. I've got Pingu there. I've got the TARDIS on the left. I've got uh, the Golden Steve statue, although he's not golden, he's orange. Uh, sorry for snapping that, but a drop of super glue should have that back in business. I printed him really small too. It went from a five hour print to about a one hour print. If I printed him at his five hour quality, he'd have a much stronger uh, larger amount of plastic connecting him to his base so it'd probably be a lot easier to keep him in one piece. That's a little Mario coin box that I was using as an example the other day saying that you might like to modify that for your um, project. It's got a question mark on the side, probably look just as good with your name or some initials or a picture on the side or maybe even a little newt newt on top or something like that if you're still working. Now for anyone who's sent through a model and um, you're finished, I will get them printed as soon as possible. If you are finished, feel free to make another design for me. I'm more than happy to uh, print extra things for you. Okay, there's no hassle with that. Now if you're having major troubles coming up with an idea, I can still make an assessment for you based on your work in Tinkercad, doing the tutorials and the starters. So just make sure you've got real uh, accurate records of that work that you do. So that was set a couple of weeks back. So it's all about using uh, Tinkercad, accessing Tinkercad and using Tinkercad uh, tutorials to teach yourself how to use it. So if you've got evidence that you've done a handful of those, I can still make an assessment for you. But the printer's here, it's ready to roll. I'm uh, loving printing out your designs. Thank you very much for the TARDIS and the Pingu and the Golden Steve. They're all great little models and I look forward to handing those over when we get back to school in a couple of weeks and it'll be awesome to um, print a couple of extras so I can keep them for display there. Some top quality work there. All right, guys, uh, so today, if you're looking to do work, this is the work you need to be finishing off. Your original Tinkercad designs, as detailed on the Emoto post. Um, thanks for your time, you rates.